today I want to talk about how we're trying to be more self-sufficient uh, during this quarantine. Uh, this is in July of 2020, I'm coming to you, uh, in the height of the coronavirus pandemic. I'm here in La Chorrera, Panama, uh, which is a pretty hard-hit area. Uh, I'm pretty sure I actually have coronavirus right now, I'm feeling kind of tired, and some people in our household have tested positive, uh, but I feel fine. Uh, for the most part, and uh, we were very concerned with the breakdown of supply chains, uh, of uh, feeding ourselves, and uh, electricity, and water, and uh, more generally becoming self-sufficient during this time. Uh, we moved into this property uh, with uh, grandparents uh, in February during the pandemic, uh, partially to support them and uh, take care of each other. Uh, we think that this is going to be more and more important in, in the coming years. Uh, local support networks, local community, agriculture and uh, utilities and so on. Uh, so we've really been experimenting a lot with that uh, during these few months. When we got here, this land was completely trashed. Uh, it's in a, a pretty urban environment. Uh, you can see all the rubble behind me. Uh, that there was a building torn down and and um, buried along with all sorts of trash in this land. Uh, it was full of all this concrete. Uh, it was full of plastics and metals, glass, broken glass, uh, as well as even some some electronics. Not very much. Um, maybe one or two AA batteries even. Um, definitely some some pretty poor pollutants uh, and soil. Uh, the soil around here is all red and full of clay, uh, so it wasn't very healthy either. Uh, and in all these rubble piles, we're living thousands and thousands of wood roaches, uh, of outdoor cockroaches. Uh, and there were so many of them that they would come into our house, uh, maybe five or ten a day. Even though they don't nest in the house, these wood roaches would get lost, they'd look for water, or things like that, and they would end up inside. Uh, as well as we also had black rats and carpenter ants, and it was just absolutely full of pests. Uh, and we've almost entirely eliminated all those pests uh, that, and turned this wasteland into a nice, uh, chicken sustaining ecosystem and um, the chickens were very key in eliminating the, the pests especially the cockroaches they love them like candy uh, so we're gonna talk a little bit about what we've done and show some before and after shots when we first moved in here uh, five or six months ago all of this land was absolutely full of rubble and trash. Uh, they had used it as a dump site for an old building that had been here. Um, there were a ton of rocks, all those rocks you see around the edge, as well as this big pile behind me. Concrete really, for the most part. Uh, it was all under the, the ground here, as well as all these rocks on the outside. Uh, so I, over the course of a, a couple months, have dug all that out of the ground here. And you can see it's still a hill, uh, maybe you can see. Uh, it's maybe a half a meter higher than the rest of the ground. Uh, I dug out about a meter deep and took out all these rocks, made a drainage ditch along the far side, going down to the drainage hole. Uh, the lowest point of the property is over there. And I refilled all of this area with hugel. Uh, with wood and cardboard uh, you see some old rice sticking out here uh, this was rice that had gotten moldy had some fungus growing on it that we just found in a bucket here so we buried that we buried we went to uh, jungle and got some leaf litter and soil from there to, to kick start some of this stuff all full of fungi as well uh, where am I looking here here we can see a piece that they've completely dug out. They love digging, digging holes. Isn't that right? 
and uh, we we've been doing this for about two months and already we dug up some some spaces and seen completely black dirt underneath but these big big logs will probably take three to five years to, to fully break down this is our chicken coop our chickens are only six weeks old uh, when we got them we put them all in this box this cage in the bottom uh, to keep them safe from predators there's cats and possums and other things around here many many predatory birds uh, but we want to put a front on this to protect them from those and then we'll move them up here to the top level where you see there's layered boxes and a, a nice roost for them it's pretty airy uh, there's a fence here on this back side uh, we tried to plant some some plants here on the other side of the fence you see there's a little tomato plant uh, which we just planted yesterday and there were a bunch of yeah you see the twig there that's a uh, mile a minute uh, which is a vine that we hoped would climb up the wall but the neighbor chickens got to it first they got through the the fence here which we need to we're still repairing uh, they killed it so we're gonna have to plant some more uh, we put bedding in in their their cage but they they just scratch it out instantly we put uh, these these are rice husks uh, and there must be some some residual rice or food in there because they they just love scratching it out and, and eating it. Yeah, there's some of them down there right now. Yeah, when we put the bedding in their, in their cage, they all run in and, and scratch it out within a few minutes. So uh, it's, it's clearly enjoyable for them and maybe they're getting some nutrients out of it, but perhaps it's not serving so well as bedding. Our plan initially with this coop uh, was pretty conventional but we're thinking now about tearing up some of this old concrete and which is breaking apart anyway and making a, a deep bedding system because uh, they, they seem quite they seem to enjoy it quite a bit and it would fit with our chicken composting ecosystem overall the chickens favorite food are black soldier flies Black soldier fly larva, BSF for short, I'll call them that. Uh, they live inside this steel drum. This is the third version that we have created. It's got some aeration holes on the side. Uh, they're protected from the water by this uh, frame, which runs, the water runs down that way. It's sealed with silicone so that the water doesn't drip through and enter these holes. Uh, and it's got a number of more holes on the in the back top ones for aeration and the bottom ones really are, are more for drainage you can see some some black stuff draining out we call that frass and here's a chicken it just jumped up and, and grabbed some they love to peck at these holes uh, and every day I put carbon rice husks and napkins and cardboard and stuff underneath here where it drips and within five minutes they there you go He's loving it. Within five minutes they come in and scratch all that out. Um, they dig some pretty deep holes here underneath as they, as they scratch around. Uh, but that's what all this litter on the, on the ground is about. It's about soaking up the, the frass so that it doesn't smell. Uh, it's kind of a natural, uh, almost like a leaf litter for them to, to scratch around in as well. They really enjoy it. Uh, they eat the larvae, some of the larvae fall out here, but additionally they eat the frass itself. Uh, there's some food remains in there, uh, bacteria, fungi, things like that, and they just absolutely love it. This is by far their favorite food. They scratch around like that, you see, and they, they find little things, don't even know what, but they this is their favorite food, their favorite thing to do. Every morning they come out here first thing and they, they peck around and scratch around under the BSF bin. The chickens love to eat greens. Uh, you see them here scratching through some, some plants that we've put in. Uh, they love eating this tree. Uh, it's got some nice fresh leaves here at the top, but they've eaten all through the bottom. We've hung some, some other 
other leaves off it, but as you can see, they, they've they really defoliated a lot of these, these branches. Uh, but the plant seems to be doing fine, it's just growing taller. Um, behind that, we have a papaya tree, uh, which is also very old and well established. Uh, when the papayas fall, they like to eat those if we if we let them. Uh, but they they love greens, and uh, we're trying to give them more greens in their environment, uh, which is why we have been constructing this chicken feed box. Uh, it's still only a few days old, really an experiment. But inside, you can see we've planted really just weeds, a number of plants from. Uh, around other places in the yard. The box lets them peck through uh, and you can see they've anything that grows all the way through they they defoliate entirely uh, but they can also get in a little bit get through these, these side holes and uh, browse the edges but they can't get at the roots and the plants inside at least so far are, are surviving and thriving well. The last plant uh, experiment, the last plant food that we're, we're trying to give them, you can see here on the ground are some corn uh, seeds. We've soaked these for 24 hours and then every morning I come out here and I uh, bury them lightly in the soil. They immediately scratch them up. They scratched these up this morning. Uh, we've also been doing this for about a week and so far none of them seem to have sprouted uh, but we're hoping that either corn or some other seeds we can get to sprout in this manner and they'll like it better they as you can see do not really like the corn very much they prefer other types of food we have here two trees a mango tree which is very young it's about doubled in size in the last few months uh, since we made a hugel put some compost around the base, it's, it's much happier. And behind that we have a cashew tree, Marañón, and uh, it had and still has a few of uh, these Matapalo vines, uh, which are, is a killer vine. They were really, they killed a number of branches on the tree, which we had to cut off. Uh, and where the end of the vines are, there's a dark spot. Uh, there was a huge carpenter ant nest there. Uh, we killed the, the ants with some, some vinegar, broke apart the nest, and we have the, the nest material here in uh, old, our old BSF bin. Uh, this material is excellent for construction. It's waterproof like a natural cement. So we're going to pulverize this, we're probably right here under the, where it is. Uh, we'll make a little pool, fill it with duckweed, and the chickens will have fresh duckweed whenever they like. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please like the video and subscribe. Uh, if you subscribe, you'll learn a lot more about these projects. Clearly, we have a lot more work to do. Uh, we'll be talking more in the future about finishing up these different projects like the chicken coop, uh, the BSF bin we'll teach you about, the duckweed pond. Uh, we're also gonna put, we're also gonna build a solar oven, uh, compost and toilet. We're gonna put solar panels on the house start collecting rainwater. Uh, we'll also talk about Bitcoin and distributed finance and really all the different ways that we are becoming self-sufficient and hopefully help you all do the same thing in this new world.